And before I dive into anything, um, please sign up for an OpenStreetMap account. You can do so at OpenStreetMap.org. Feel free to uh, multitask and do that on the side if you haven't already while I kick things off. So. Uh, so introducing myself and the session today. So my name is Jess Butler. I am the program director at OpenStreetMap US. I am not in New York City. I'm based in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but I've had the pleasure of attending Open Data Week virtually for a couple of years now. And it's one of our favorite events of the year to participate in at OpenStreetMap US. So for this one, we're focusing on how to um, celebrate and um, improve representation of women and women's history through open data, specifically OpenStreetMap, but also um, if we have time, and also Richard Hears from Wikimedia NYC, will be touching a little bit on Wikipedia as well. So um, also joining me is um, Natalie Milbrod, and as I said, um, Richard Knifel, they'll have a chance to speak towards the end um, about other ways that um, you can participate and get involved with this type of work. Uh, so this is the participatory session, part of the session. Um, so kicking things off, um, I have a question for everyone here um, to guess. So how many statues celebrating prominent women do you think exist across the US? And just go ahead, throw out some numbers. No wrong answers. Well, there is a, there is a wrong, <laughs> there are wrong answers, but I'd love to hear um, what your guesses are. Okay, we got 100, 350, less than 100, 3,500. I, I will say that's a big number. Okay, awesome. There's some good numbers coming in. Okay, so some people were pretty spot on here. So numbers are around 200 to 400 across the U.S. Uh, so there's different um different sources that say different numbers. And what I'm pulling from is a few years old, but even if more have been created in the past couple of years, um, it's still low numbers. So 200 to 400 estimated across the US. So here's another quick quiz for you. How about the number of street names honoring women across the US? 100, 200, 1000. Okay, maybe I'll wait for one or two more answers. Okay, I'll reveal. So that was actually a trick question. So um, there is no inventory of this data. We actually don't know um, how many street names across the U.S. Um, honor women. Um, this hasn't been um, this hasn't been assessed. No one's really tracking this information. There are cities and states and other. Um, different geographies that have um, done these assessments, but we don't have a large inventory to assess this. Um, so why is this important, um, especially with representation? That small number of the, um, the statues um, actually only represent four to eight percent of the statues and monuments and other commemorations across the US. So you can imagine it's also probably similar for street names and other parts of our infrastructure that are honoring individuals. And so what this really means though, is that there are tons of stories, people, um, histories, important aspects of our culture and society that aren't being shared, aren't being honored, um, not just with women, but with other groups across the US um, I imagine, you know, people of color and um, other communities are probably even smaller than these numbers, um, and those weren't figures that I was able to find. So this means that there are histories that are just in stories that are not being told across the U.S. So what what can we do about this? I mean, it would be great to um, be able to improve these numbers, but for the rest of us, what how can we help with this representation understanding? Um, and that comes to mapping. So one of my favorite things about mapping and how I got into this field is that when we map what exists, that helps us understand what's missing. So if we can be mapping, you know, the statues and streets and other representations that do exist on the ground, we're going to be able to better help identify what is missing and advocate for those gaps to be filled. So there's groups that are already doing this. Um, a group called GeoChicas started this 
fantastic project years ago um, called Las Calles de las Mujeres, where in their communities, they are mapping just this. They're mapping where wet women are represented through street names in their communities. Um, but they're also taking it a step further. So not just identifying where women have been represented, but also improving the Wikipedia data for those individuals as well, um, because that's also a significant gap. It's one thing to be able to identify where places and infrastructure have been named after um, prominent women um, and other um, underrepresented individuals, um, but also under knowing their history and being able to learn about those individuals is also a critical component of this. So this is a fantastic project. Um, that leverages Wikipedia as well as OpenStreetMap. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people are probably familiar with Wikipedia, uh, but if you're less familiar with OpenStreetMap, OpenStreetMap is the world's largest freely editable geospatial database. And so this is a platform where anyone anywhere in the world can edit the map and add details that are important to them. So not only adding features that have commercial interests that help you, you know, get your Uber Eats delivery or um, have other, other interests, but also can you know, provide an opportunity for mapping and displaying information that are important to your community as well, um, such as representing um, historical features that are features and figures that are important to you. So how OpenStreetMap works. Um, so OpenStreetMap being a freely editable database relies on contributions from volunteers around the world, uh, mapping their local community. Uh, for example, in New York City, it's one of the best mapped parts of the world in OpenStreetMap. And that's largely because of local community members who are adding every bike rack that they find or you know, adding details about um, buildings and businesses throughout their daily lives. Uh, but it's also contributed um, by government entities and corporations that are also using this map data as well. So all of this data comes in, but how it's used is also just as important. So OpenStreetMap is used by um, not only thousands of individuals around the world, but also companies, governments, um, different media organizations. If you've ever played Pokemon Go, you are walking around in OpenStreetMap virtually, um, but also your Amazon deliveries, your, um, your, your Lyft rides, all of these rely on OpenStreetMap data, um, as well as organizations like the Red Cross, you know, the United Nations, other government entities, they're all using this data. Um, so bring this back around to the, rep the conversation around representation, if all of these different entities, organizations, individuals, are all pulling from the same database in their maps, it's critical that we are representing communities properly and different um, marginalized groups, women, people of color, um, underrepresented genders, um, all these communities should be better represented so that that's part of all these daily way ways that we use OpenStreetMap. So, um, taking a step back from just the general database, I do want to give kind of a quick overview of how um, OpenStreetMap is you know, structured. It's not just a loose entity of contributors. We also have um, organizations such as OpenStreetMap US, who uh, I work for, that are advocating for the use of OpenStreetMap um, in the US um, and around the world. So OpenStreetMap US, uh, runs programs and projects that are advocating for communities using data, as well as um, advocating for impactful ways that this data can make a difference from all the way from the federal government um, down to working with local nonprofits in different communities. So one of the mapping campaigns that we um, started a few years back is uh, called Women Remembered. So this was a community started project where several women from our community gathered on International Women's Day in 2021, and they were inspired by that Geo Chicas project that I mentioned earlier. Um, so they recognized that this representation of data both in OpenStreetMap and in Wikipedia were, it was too low and they wanted to be able to improve this data across the US as well. 
Um, so this is a project that we will be focusing on today and more specifically, we will be looking and improving uh, data in New York City. Um, so just a few more examples. Um, so this is kind of what that representation can look like when it's better mapped. So adding details such as um, Wikipedia entries, you know, names that are um, where that naming comes from, information like that. So that when people are using the data, um, they, under, they understand who those features are representing and can go on to learn more information just through the map itself. So connecting the dots between OpenStreetMap and Wikipedia. So in the next hour, um, in less than an hour at this point, the next 40 minutes, we're gonna try to do a quick hands-on activity um, that we can work on improving data in New York City. There's a handful of features, um, particularly honorary intersections in Queens um, that have been documented by the Queens Memory Project that represent or honor um, prominent women in Queens. So we're going to be working to close that data gap, um, adding information in OpenStreetMap directly about uh, about those women, um, and then also um, give a few minutes at the end for Natalie to talk about the Queen's Memory Project and for Richard to also share about what Media NYC is further ways to get involved. So before I dive into everything, um, we'll share these um, links in the chat as well. Um, but just in case we lose anyone as we're going along, I wanted to make sure to share this info up front. Um, there's ways to stay involved with OpenStreetMap US and the many camp mapping campaigns, projects, and programs that we're running across the US. Um, so join our Slack, follow us on social media. Um, but also we have a GeoLeadies meetup tomorrow. So I'd welcome um, you to attend and sign up. You can use the QR code there um, to sign up for the event. And we can also share that link in the chat as well. So let's get started. Let's actually do some mapping. We're already um, almost halfway through the session, so we'll dive in. I'm going to do a quick demo um, before we hand it off. Um, I should say that um, we have about space for about 10 to 15 people to contribute. Um, so we'll try to get people to um, dive in with the mapping. But um, otherwise, um, please feel free to um, stick around, see how we're adding that data to the map, because they'll also be applicable outside of these features, and it'll be good um, to have your participation ongoing um, as you're walking around New York City, adding features and data to the map. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, and just one more time, feel free to sign up for OpenStreetMap. Um, so like I said, we're going to be working on adding a handful of features in Queens, um, that have been honoring prominent women in the community. Um, oftentimes, these, um, these features are, um, you know, street signs are put up um, and events are held to honor these, uh, these individuals, um, but it might take some time if, you know, if it happens for that data get, to get onto, um, onto maps that we're using every day. So we wanna make sure that when, it, when people are using OpenStreetMap, that they're also seeing who this is honoring. Um, so we'll be adding details, um, largely uh, the name information, and we'll be doing that by adding what we call tags to OpenStreetMap. So in OpenStreetMap, any of the features that are on the map have what we call tags. These are attributes that provide additional information about that feature. Um, so for example, a tag, could have um, the name, which is 83rd Street in this example, um, but can also have additional information. So um, this tag here is saying that it's a one-way yes. So this is indicating that this feature is a one-way street. So we call, we call these tags, we call them keys and values. So we'll be adding a handful of keys and values to um, the features that we'll be mapping today. So don't dive into this yet. Um, I should have, let me take a step back. So I'm gonna do a quick demo here first and then I'll share the information on how to get started. Um, so we will be using, um, we'll be going off of a spreadsheet here 
Normally we don't organize our mapping and spreadsheets, but just for the sake of today's um, event, it seemed like the easiest way to get people started. Um, so we documented, um, we pulled about, yeah, about 20, 21 features um, from the Queen's Memory Project, um, identifying places where women are being honored, but that data is not currently represented in OpenStreetMap or needs to be improved. Um, so I'll share the spreadsheet here in a minute, um, but what you'll do uh, once you have access to it, you'll come in here and you will provide your OSM username. Let me zoom in here so everyone can see it better. Um, so I'm gonna be adding Lorena Borjas Way. Um, and what I'll do is I'll come to step three here and I'm gonna open up this feature in OpenStreetMap. And so this is going to take me right to that intersection where Lorena Borjas is uh, name is being honored with that street sign. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you are already signed in. Hopefully you've already set up your um, OpenStreetMap account. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to check here. So this is the node or the feature for that intersection where the sign is. And on the left hand panel is where any of those tags are going to be that I was talking about. Um, so I'm going to check first to see if the um, the name has already been added to OpenStreetMap, which with the lack of tags here, it's very easy to see that, no, that's not the case. So I'm gonna come back to the spreadsheet here and answer this question. Is the feature already named in OpenStreetMap? I'm gonna say no. So what I need to do is I need to add three tags here in order to make this a complete feature. So I'm gonna go back and I'm going to hit edit and edit with ID. And so I'm actually going to pull open that feature for editing. So you can see over here in the tag section, there's an opportunity for me to add that information. So you can already, you can either type this in or you can copy it. So I'm going to first give it a junction tag. And this just tells us that this is an intersection that has additional information. If you start typing it in, you'll also see that it will provide a drop down menu with different options. So junction equals yes. I'm gonna come back to my spreadsheet. And the name here is Lorena Borjas Way. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. It'll be easier. And jump back to OpenStreetMap. The name, Lorena Borjas Way. There's one more that I need to do. I need to add one more tag. Come back here and that's source. And we got this information from the Queen's Memory Project. So we want to give them rec recognition that that's where this information came from. I'm going to add a source at the Queen's Memory Project. So this feature has been completed and it's going to be able to represent uh, Lorena Borjas properly in OpenStreetMap. Um, so what I need to do after I've added those three tags or those three pieces of information, I'm going to come up here to the upper right hand side hit save. For the change set comments, I've already provided this here. So this is additional information that we want to um, explain what we're mapping. So um, I've already provided that here to make it easier for folks. So we can copy that in. So we added an honorary name and I also gave it a hashtag for Open Data Week 2023. And I'm gonna hit upload. And there it is. So that information is going to be visible in OpenStreetMap soon. Sometimes it takes a little bit, um, but we've gone ahead and we've um, updated that information for Lorena Borjas. So <laughs> I've been rushing through everything. Hopefully I haven't completely lost everyone, um, but we just wanted to show how easy it is to edit OpenStreetMap once you have that account. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and share that spreadsheet for everyone that real quick. Here's that. Um, I shared it in the chat, um, but also if um, you, it's easier, you can also use this tiny URL, um, tinyurl.com slash ODW-2023. And when you're here, oh good, I see quite a few people. So go ahead. Um, for those of you who were able to make an OpenStreetMap account, Go ahead and start adding your name to these lines. 
we want to assign each of these pieces to a different individual. Because uh, if we all try to start mapping the same feature, that's going to cause um, some challenges. Um, OpenStreetMap does have tools that manage this kind of workflow, workflow um, called a tasking manager or map roulette is another great example. Um, but just for today's sake, we'll just use the spreadsheet style. Um, so yeah, go ahead, unable to edit. Oh no, um, if you are line 17 and 18 might not be editable, but um, try coming down to 24 and below. Let me know if there's any issues there. Is everyone still having issues with editing? Okay, let me fix that real quick. It's always the joys of doing a live participatory um, event. So give me one second here. Let me check this. Link should add it. One second, I'm gonna stop sharing. Apologies for the technical difficulties. Um, let me see if I can get this sorted here. And thank you for your patience. Hey, just as you work that out, would you like me to just do a quick intro? Perfect. That would be great. Okay, yeah, if you great. want to talk about the Queen's Memory Project, thank you. And thanks everyone for being flexible. Sometimes this happens. You know, what's okay. funny is that I'm looking at your settings and I and it looks right to me. Like I, I'm looking at, so I have no idea what's what's up either. <laughs> but um, my name is Natalie Milbrot. I'm the director of the Queen's Memory Project, which is a participatory archiving program that's um, supported by Queen's Public Library and also Queen's College CUNY. And our team um, does different things that are local history related. We do a lot of um, oral history interviewing and um, training people on how to conduct good interviews. Um, but we also have projects like um, the Queen's Name Explorer, which is new for us this year. And what it is, and I'll share my screen with you so that you can see, is an, an interactive map of Queens in New York City that shows every place that's named after an individual person. So we have different types of named places indicated by different types of icons. And if you click on this filter button, then you can see a breakdown of how many there are of these different things. So you can see here that, for example, there are you know, 65 buildings that are named after people. And you can see that buildings are indicated by these purple um, icons. We have um, 600 or 462 streets. Um, these honorary street names are really an important part of the project because um, local laws changed in New York City in, I believe, the early 90s. And um, city council has um, created a ton of honorary street names. Usually the process is that um, community members who petition their community board and get approval for an honorary street naming, it'll then go to a city council member. And then the city council member will present it to the rest of the city council and they will vote on it and approve it. And so they're really just a block long. So what's nice about that is that um, we're trying as a public library to raise people's awareness about the process of naming. And we're also trying to document what things have been named and what things have not been named. And that way we're, we're hoping to expose some silences, some gaps in representation. So um, right now uh, we have about a thousand entries live on the site. And what we're hoping to do is to just, um, first of all, get entries up on this map for every uh, named place and then start doing some demographic analysis so that we can say, okay, in this community board district, um, here are, are the demographics of the people who live in the district. And here are the demographics of the, you know, 60 people who are named on bridges and streets and schools and parks, et cetera. And do these two groups of people, are they a mirror to each other or are there maybe um, some gaps in representation, which I have a feeling there probably will be. Um, another thing that we're able to do on this map is to um, pull together special collections of the entries for you know, different purposes. So right now during Women's History Month, we have two different uh, curated collections and this is the source for the things that you'll be working on today. One of them is a collection of um, 
female educators and one is on activists and organizers. And so you can see here um, these different, you know, stops on the on the uh, path or whatever um, are highlighted in these um, red markers. And then you can see um, pictures of the, the people and little um, biographical write-ups about them, and then list of sources below that. Also, if you're interested in seeing the outlines of um, community board districts or of neighborhoods um, or of city council districts, those are all things that you're able to do on the map as well. Okay, so Jess, how are we doing? We got it fixed. <laughs> all right, okay, so then I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let people have an opportunity to do the exercise. Thank you so much, Natalie. Um, and thank you, Ariana, for helping me uh, or confirming that we're good to go. I'll reshare my window. Um, thanks everyone for the um, patience while I fix that. You'll need to refresh your screen, uh, or sorry, refresh the spreadsheet, uh, probably to be able to access, but I do see a handful of people dropping their names in. Um, so um, make sure, yeah, you're adding your OSM username and we're doing one person per line here. Um, so I see a handful of people, um, feel free to go ahead and add your name next to a feature that you're gonna wanna map. And as I mentioned earlier, um, all these features pull from the map that Natalie was just showing you. So um, OpenStreetMap is being used in the background of that map. And we wanted to make sure uh, that the data that is being um, you know, represented um, with that amazing name explorer um, is also that information is also making its way to OpenStreetMap. Um, and we can add details and fill the gaps there as well. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through um, on one more example here, um, but feel free to follow me along. Um, but if you feel comfortable diving ahead and feel like you know what you're doing, um, go ahead. Um, and if you complete one, you're also welcome to go through and complete others. Um, but yeah, I will dive ahead with um, Helen Marshall Boulevard here. I'm gonna add my OSM username. Step three, I'm gonna open the link to that feature in OpenStreetMap. Um, so this, this intersection does have a couple tags here, um, but it doesn't have uh, the honorary name for, um, for Helen Marshall. So I'm gonna come back to my spreadsheet here and I'm gonna answer the question no here. And then I'm gonna need to add these three tags like we showed before. So I'm gonna do that by hitting edit, edit with ID editor. And like I said before, it's already gonna have that feature highlighted. Um, so make sure you don't click around to the other features, otherwise you might lose which one you wanna focus on here. Um, and in this case, there's already features here. We're gonna to want to ignore all of these. We don't want to change any data that's already been put in. Um, should also, you know, I do wanna, um, make note that you know this is a live database, so we're contributing right into the world. Um, so just be careful of not um, editing any of the other data. We just want to be adding those tags that we've outlined in the spreadsheet. Um, so I'll go ahead and go down here to the tag section and add another tag under the highway and traffic signals in this case. So I'm gonna go back to the spreadsheet to check which ones I need to add. So junction equals yes. Like I said before, once you start typing those, it's going to offer up those as an example. So that's my first one. The name is the second one. Once you set up to say, like, if you want to come, like, email me. Yeah. It might be set up to that. So I can just keep going. Okay. Oops, sorry, wrong tab there. And then my source tag here. Okay, so I've gone ahead into this intersection. We've added the three tags that are needed. So the junction tag, the name indicate providing that name information, and then finally the source. So once I've added those three, I'm going to save. And always when you're editing an OpenStreetMap, make sure that you always add a change set comment saying what you've added to the map. And like I said before, I've already 
pre wrote that out for you. So feel free to copy that one that's provided. And then we're going to upload the Stoke and Street map. Okay, how's everyone doing? Any questions in the comments here? So I was doing the um, Persia Campbell Dome. Yeah. And it's already named the Campbell Dome. So, yeah, good question. Um, so, yeah, so we do have a few features down here that are buildings and places. Um, so great question. I was actually hoping someone would ask about that one. So I'm glad that you did. <laughs> um, so in the case that the Persia uh, or the, the Campbell Dome is already named, um, I would leave the name as is. Um, but instead, um, what you're going to do is just make sure you've added um, this etymology tag. Um, so that tag there just, um, it doesn't necessarily change the name of the feature, but what it does is it identifies who that feature has been named after. So in that case, feel free to leave the name as is, um, but just make sure to add that etymology tag. I see, so that's a separate tag from the name. Exactly, yeah. So name etymology. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, when you type that, you, you'll be able to type in name and then um, the colon there. Um, and that should still pop up, but also feel free to copy that, uh, that key value there. Yeah, got it. Awesome. Thank you for hopping on and asking a question. If anyone else has any questions as well, um, feel free to jump on. Happy to assist. Um, but yeah, down in this um, buildings and places section, um, we do have these different types of tags. And this is really helpful, especially with um, features that um, may have a name, but we might go through day-to-day -day life not realizing it's actually named after someone. I feel like Aurora Pond here is such a great example um, that people might know that it's called Aurora Pond, but have no idea that it's named after someone. Um, so by being able to add that etymology tag, um, then we can, you know, provide that additional information. And I see that someone's already working on it right now, so that's great. Okay, great. Yeah, looks like a lot of people are running through this. That's awesome. I'm going to grab another one myself, actually, here. And I'll grab one of these etymology ones so that we can demonstrate that. I'll do Powder Maker Hall here. So yeah, this is another example. Um, Powder Maker Hall um, is named after someone, and the name is there, but we don't, we wouldn't know who that's named after necessarily. So I'm going to go ahead and hit edit. I'm going to come back here though, and for this one, the feature is already named, so that's good. Um, but taking a look at the feature itself, there's no etymology tag here, so I'm going to answer no for that question. I don't need to worry about that. I do need to add the etymology. So you can see as I started to type that up, quite a few different options came up. I'm not sure if you can see that if it's too tiny on the screen share, um, but you'll just want to make sure that it's a correct one. There's a few different um, detailed options. And I'm just going to go ahead and add that there. And then my source tag as well. So it's ref, it's a source underscore ref. Nope, <laughs> it should be just source. Uh, um, yeah, mine, mine was popping up that like it wouldn't let me just do source. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll leave that there for now um, without that one. If you're having trouble with that source tag, um, I can okay. go in and fix that later. The key part here is that etymology. Okay, so cool. Go ahead and save. And Jess, we have a question in the chat, how to open oh, yeah. a tag in the map. I think the, the first thing is to be um, logged in and ready to edit, right? You have to click the edit button. Yeah, correct. Um, thank you for pointing out that question. I, I will, let me just save this really quick and then I'll answer your question, Rob. Thanks for asking that. Add my comment and then I will upload. Um, so if you're wanting to open a feature um, in OpenStreetMap, um, like Natalie mentioned, you'll just want to make sure first that you are logged in um, at OpenStreetMap.org. Um, first of all, that you've made an account and then you're logged in. 
Um, and then from the spreadsheet that we shared, um, these links here go directly to one of those features. Um, so I'll scroll up and find another one to work on. Um, so for example, Rob, maybe I'll just go from yours. I won't do the work, but I'll at least show you what to do. Um, so I'll go ahead and click on that link. And so this is the node here. And what you want to do to add that additional information is in the upper left-hand corner, there's this edit button. Um, I always click the arrow next to it and then say edit with ID. And that will open up the edit window. And all of the information about that feature is here on the left. And if you scroll down, you'll see an area that says tags. And this is where you're going to add, um, in your case, those three tag it pieces for this feature. I hope that answers your question, Rob. I won't go ahead and do um, the mapping for you. Awesome, glad that answered your question. Okay. And then I'll check on any other questions. Row 18, or number 18. Ooh, good question. Let me pop that feature open, Leah. Uh, okay, so um, in this case, um, it doesn't give the full name. Um, I would say just in this case, um, so we'll, we'll probably want to go back in later and update the name, but I'm going to want to check that to make sure we're doing it correctly. Um, so maybe just in your case, Leah, go ahead and just add the etymology and then we can check on that data later to make sure it's uh, the name is um, meeting the structure that um, all the other schools are using. Okay, great. Well, I want to stop there on my side. Um, oh, let me give one more. Actually, before I do, I'm going to give one more um, bit of information that will segue towards Richard um, so he can share about Wikimedia NYC. Um, so we've been focusing on the just the OpenStreetMap component. Um, but if you scroll further right um, on the spreadsheet, there's this whole section about Wikipedia. So we've just done the first half of this, and that is recognizing um, these individuals in OpenStreetMap. But the second component of this um, is also adding, understanding what avail information is available on Wikipedia. Um, so what we can do, um, and you're welcome to continue after the session, is also check, does the person have a, an entry in Wikipedia? Um, there's also additional tags that allow us um, to connect the data between OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. Um, and we won't have time to go through um, that information, at least on my part here, um, but at least tracking if that person has an entry in Wikipedia can allow the OpenStreetMap community who might um, also start tackling this project to link those features together. Um, and if you attend the GeoLadies meetup tomorrow, um, we might be able to spend some time working on that as well. Um, but there's tons of information out there if you're interested um, in the connection between OpenStreetMap and Wikipedia. Um, but other than that, I will stop sharing my screen um, and I'll pass it off to Richard who can pick up on the, the Wikimedia side. Hi. Um, uh, nice to meet you all. I'm Richard Nipel from Wikimedia New York City, your friendly local uh, Wikipedia and related projects chapter. Um, I wanted to share a bit about this uh, project, Wikidata. So Wikidata is a sort of a, uh, a sister project of Wikipedia. It includes everything that every, every... Oh, you're muted, Richard. Thank you. That's an excellent point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this helpful advice. Uh, if I'm muted now, hi, nice to meet you all. I'm Richard Nipel from Wikimedia New York City, uh, your local uh, nonprofit chapter supporting Wikipedia and related projects. Um, I wanted to share, uh, I'm sorry, am I sharing right now? Yeah, I think I'm sharing. Yes. Uh, yeah, I wanted to share uh, the Wikidata project, which is a uh, uh, which is a structured data project that includes everything that has a has an article in Wikipedia and many more topics as well. So it can get a lot more into some of the hyper local topics that we might be interested in for New York City, uh, in terms of covering schools and parks and streets and things like that. Um, I wanted to share a query, a map of uh, of sites in in New York City uh, that are uh, not just some of them honoring women, but also uh, that have been created or founded by women. Um, and I just want to share this here. It's through this little query here, and I can help you play with a query like this if you like at some point. Um, and I'll just show you the map as a whole. 
And so this has a little dot for everything that is uh, created, that is named after, created by, founded by, has its, has its architect, or has its artist, a woman in, in New York City that is in the database currently, which is um, which is limited, of course, um, but it, it ideally could be much bigger. Um, so you can see all sorts of things like here. Here's the Queens, named after Queen Catherine of England. <laughs> it's named after a woman. Uh, Sally, more recently, a uh, 20th century example, Shirley Chisholm State Park, named after Shirley Chisholm. Um, you have various buildings uh, that are named after women or that are um, built by women as, a, as, a, as an architect. Um, so Dana Boyd founded the Data and Society Research Institute. I think that's something that uh, maybe some of us uh, are familiar with. Um, and the, the idea is that uh, Wikidata is sort of a universal, um, it's, it's a universal database. Uh, where we can store things about both biography uh, and geography and intersect them together. And you can put all sorts of biographical information that you couldn't necessarily put in other data databases. So for example, you can put obviously information about gender, about ethnicity, about schools that someone attended, about uh, their different occupations they've had. Um, and the, the, the thing about it is it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a universal database. So once it's in there, it can be used by anyone for any purpose. And hopefully you can make a bunch of thematic maps. I've been in touch with uh, Natalie and other folks about uh, creating a, a, a more a more universalized open source map for the New York City uh, for the New York City boroughs, so we call it the Open Borough Map. Um, so hopefully one for Queens and for Brooklyn, um, and we'll we're also thinking about making uh, physical installations. So in, in some libraries where people can browse around uh, the maps of, of of New York City and look at um, and, and look at uh, and look at things that are that are thematically in different areas. Um, yeah. And uh, in addition, I just wanted to invite people, if you want to participate, uh, you're welcome to come to our, our events. We have a lot of uh, local events. The next ones are for Earth Day. Uh, so I think that maybe also is a lot of interest of some of the parks and other, other community gardens and things like that in our area. And you're welcome to join us on Earth Day at the Bishop Library in uh, Brooklyn. And we'll also have a picnic the day after. Thanks. Thanks, Richard. Um... I do have a couple just quick closing slides on my side, um, but um, just want to make note that I'll gather all these links from Richard and Natalie as well, um, and then um, also the slides that I'm sharing today. Um, I will send all that out by email to everyone who attended today so that you don't lose track of all of, all of these details and ways to get involved. Um, but just to quickly share from our side, um, I just wanna encourage everyone to keep mapping if you started today um, or if you wanna get involved, but maybe today wasn't um, the, you know, the place where you started, there's still other ways you can contribute. So um, first of all, we do have um, documentation on different ways you can contribute to the Women Remembered Project. Um, so it's not just NYC, uh, NYC it's all over um, the country and the globe. Um, so if you want guidance on how you could be improving this in Atlanta, Georgia, or in Portland, Oregon, um, you can use this guidance for that. Um, there's also a great app that I would recommend called Every Door. Um, it allows you to edit OpenStreetMap. Um, so there's a lot of commemorative features that are, you know, they're just plaques on a building or um, details on a park bench. All of these are worth mapping, um, but a lot more difficult to do from satellite imagery um, and the way we are mapping today. So um, if you download an app like Every Door, you can be mapping in your day-to-day -day life as you're walking around New York City or wherever you're calling in from today. Um, and just as a quick reminder about our GeoLadies event tomorrow, um, I'm sharing the link in the chat, but again, the QR code works there as well. Um, and then finally, we do have OpenStreetMap US hosts our um, annual conference, and we'll be gathering this year in June in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I would welcome all of you to attend, and also, if especially, I know there's a few um, folks around OpenStreetMap and mapping and open data in the room. We're still accepting proposals, so if you have a project that you want to share, um, even if it's not using OpenStreetMap yet, but you see how OpenStreetMap could help with your work, uh, we'd love to collaborate with you. So please feel free um, to visit uh, the website there. Again, I'll share that link later on. Um, but other than that, that is all from my side. So thank you so much for participating and attending. 
I hope, um, yeah, I hope you got a lot out of it today. Um, you know, we went through quite a few things. I um, would love to, yeah, love to see you involved in the future.